Today, I'm going to show you how I developed the signup form. I'll show you how I used a Figma design to create the HTML structure, how I applied all the CSS styling, and how I added hover and focus dates. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a project that I'm currently working on. In my previous video, I showed you how I created the signup form using Figma. If you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. In this video, I'm going to take that Figma design and then convert it to HTML and CSS. I'm going to show you the full coding tutorial from beginning to end. I have these two states that I already designed and I'm going to implement them in this video. The style on the left represents the form state when no one has interacted with it, and then the style on the right indicates the hover state and the active state of the form. So using this design as a guide, I'm going to jump into CodePen and start developing it. So jumping into CodePen, I have the head tag with a link to the font family that I'm going to use, and then I have body tags that are empty. And then in the CSS, I declared all of my root variables, and then I set the box sizing to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. So this is all the basic HTML and CSS, and then I'm going to show you how to write everything and how to style it. So first in the body tags, I'm going to create a div class of wrapper. So this div will essentially hold the entire form. Then within this wrapper, I'm going to hold all of the elements in the design. So this wrapper essentially represents this entire container. And then I'm going to have a header element, a description element, some form elements, and then a submit button at the bottom. So following this, first I'm going to add an H1 element with a class of title. Then I'm going to have a paragraph tag with a class of description. And beneath the header and description, I have the forms. Now there are multiple ways that you can approach this. The way that I'm going to do it is, I'm going to take a group that will essentially hold the label for the form and the actual form element. So I will have one form element for the name and then another form element for the email. And then beneath that, I will have the submit button. So back in CodePen, I'm going to write form-group. And for each form group, it will have a label and an input element. So first I'm referencing the label and then I will create an input. Now for the label tag, you have to indicate what it is a label for. So I'm just going to write name for the first element. So then for that input, I need to give it the same ID. So I'm going to give it an ID of name. And then I'm going to copy this and paste it for the email field. So here, instead of having the label for the name, it will be labeled for the email. And then I have to change the ID of the input element. And then beneath this, I'm going to add a button with a class of button primary. So this is the entire underlying structure of this page and everything else will be completed with added copy and styling within CSS. So now I'm going to add realistic content to the page so we can actually see what we're doing a little bit better. So going back into my design, I'm just copying all of the text that I have and placing it in my code pen. So there we go, that's all of the HTML and everything else will be completed within CSS. So as you can see, we have to do quite a bit of work to get it to look like this. So jumping into my CSS, first I'm just going to add some styling to the body and then I'm going to add specific styling for each of the elements. So first I'm going to declare the body and first I want to update the font. So I'm going to reference the font family that I want. Then I'm going to set the color to a variable that I declared earlier. Now to add this image to the background, there are multiple ways that you can do this. This image is actually a modification of this darker purple image. So I'm actually going to pull this darker image and then apply modification so it looks like this. So in my CSS, I'm going to reference the body and then I'm going to add a before property to it. 
And for this before property, I'm going to add a content tag, and this will be a URL to the actual image that I'm using. So now we can see that original image on the page. And then I'm going to set this to a display of block. I'm going to set the position of this to absolute. I'm going to set the background blend mode to multiply. I'm going to set the opacity to 0 0.4. And then I'm going to add a filter with a brightness level set to 3. Now this image is really large, so I don't want it to scroll horizontally or vertically here. So instead, I'm going to set it to an overflow X to be hidden and an overflow Y to be hidden as well. And I'm also going to set Z index to negative one, so it's behind the elements on the page. Then I'm going to set all of the positioning properties to zero. So top, left, right, bottom. So now this background looks pretty good. So now we can apply styling to the actual wrapper of the form. So again, this wrapper holds the entire form. So in my CSS, I'm referencing that wrapper. And first I want to set the background color to white. I'm going to fix the width of this to 20 REM. I'm going to add some padding of 2 REM. I want to add a border radius. And then I'm going to set the margin to 2 REM auto. So there we go. Now the form definitely looks like it's coming together. So again, to reference the design, I have this textile as place center aligned. Then I have these elements as all left aligned, and then they have their own style properties. So now I'm going to jump back into here and start styling each element of the form. So I'm referencing the title and I'm going to set the text aligned to center. And I need there to be a bit of breathing room between the title and this description copy. So I'm going to add a margin bottom of one REM. Then I'm going to apply properties for the actual description. So going back into my Figma, again, here I have the description and I want there to be a bit of space between this element and the actual form. So jumping back into CodePen, I'm going to set the font size to 0.8 REM, so it's a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to add a margin bottom here as well to one REM. So that way there's a bit of space. Next, I have to work on these form elements. Now there are various ways that you can approach this, but the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to place this label and this form element in a group called form group, which I've already done. And then I'm going to add it to a display of flex. So in that way, I can set the flex direction to column. So that way the label will definitely be on top of the actual element. So jumping back into my code pen, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So first I'm going to reference that form group and I'm going to set the display of this to flex. And then I'm going to set the flex direction to column. Now the label is on top of the form element and then I'm just going to improve the margin. So I'm going to set it to one REM and then zero. Next, I want to apply certain styling for this form label and certain styling for this form element. So back in my HTML, I'm going to add a class for this label and I'm going to set it to form label. And then I'm also going to add a class for the input and I'm going to call it form input. So back in my CSS, I'm referencing that form label and I'm going to set the font size to 0.8 REM as well. And then I'm going to set the margin bottom to 0.2 REM. Next, I'm going to apply styling for the actual input. So I'm going to reference the form input. And jumping back into the design, we can see that it clearly has a background color associated with it. 
the placeholder text has its own styling, and there's definitely a bit of padding in here. So back in CodePen, first I'm going to write border and then none. I'm going to set the background color to a variable I already declared earlier. I'm going to set the border radius. I'm going to set a padding. This form element does not automatically inherit the font used in the project, so I'm going to set font family to inherit. I'm going to set the color to inherit as well. I'm going to set the outline to none. Then I'm going to modify this placeholder styling. So I'm going to reference that form input, and then I'm going to reference the placeholder. And here I want to change the color. So this is looking pretty close so far. It's pretty close to what we have designed. I just have to work on the submit button. So here I'm going to reference that button primary. I'm going to set the border to none as well. I'm going to set the background color to the primary color in the project. I'm setting the color to white. I'm setting a border radius and padding. I'm going to set a margin top to one REM. I'm also going to set the font family to inherit here as well. I'm going to set the font weight to bold. I'm going to set the width of this to 16 REM so it will always be that size. I'm going to set the cursor to pointer here. So that way when the user is actually on top of it, it actually changes to a pointer. So this is all the basic styling for that form. And now I'm going to go back and add a hover and focus state for the form elements as well. So for the hover state, we clearly change the color of the element and add a shadow. And then for the focus state, I also added a stroke. So going back into my code pen, initially I'm going to add some values for the regular form input, and then I'm going to modify them for the hover and focus state. So for this form input, first I'm going to add a border that's one pixel solid and set to a transparent value. Then I'm also going to add a box shadow that's also set to a transparent value. Now the reason why I'm adding these properties here as transparent is because when I added these elements to the hover or the active state, it actually changed the position of the form element on the page to make room for these elements. So first I'm adding these as completely transparent and then I'm going to add the hover state and the active state with these enabled. So then I'm going to reference that form input and add a hover state. And again, I'm going to copy these elements that I already defined earlier, but I'm going to change the color of them. So instead of it being transparent, I'm going to set it to a medium pink color. And I'm also going to set that to the box shadow. And then I'm going to set the background to white. And then for the focus state, it's very similar. I'm going to copy and paste these values, but then add a slightly different color to them. The last thing I'm actually going to do is add a hover state for this button. I think it needs to pop a little bit more when the cursor is over it. So I'm going to add a hover state. So I'm going to set the background color to a dark purple when the button is hovered on. I just need to add a transition here. So I'm going to copy the same one that I applied for the form elements and paste that for the button. So now when I'm on that button, it also changes the color. So now when I hover over the form, it changes the state. And when I tap into it, it has a different focus state. So now I can actually type in content in this form. When I increase or decrease the window, everything remains the same size because I set each element to a particular width. So there you go. That's how I created the sign-up form using HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.